Hello students, this lesson is about redox titrations and stoichiometry. So what is a titration? If you remember from grade 11, it's the gradual addition of one reagent or substance or solution to another until you get a permanent change. And the reason we do that is this is a way we can find the unknown concentration of a substance. All right, so th that's what a titration looks like. I'm sure you've seen this before. That's the setup. We need a barrette, a beaker, an Erlenmeyer flask, pipette. And so a, s a question looks something like this. What's the concentration of 10 mils of acetic, <laughs> acidic iron 2 solution that is titrated with 0 0.008 moles per liter of potassium permanganate solution? So rule number one here is set up the equipment as shown so you need a um, three beakers one for waste one for the iron two solution one for the potassium permanganate solution and then you need a barrette and a flask an Erlenmeyer flask rinse the barrette with the titrant so the substance the titrant is the substance that goes in the barrette so we take some of the purple there KMNO4 and we rinse out the, the barrette. We'll show you how to do that when we do it in the lab. Okay, um, then we fill the barrette to the zero mark using the titrant or KMNO4. Okay, so we fill it up and you probably did it last year, we'll do it in class. Um, and make sure there's no air in the tip or you'll get a false volume reading. So you gotta fill up the tip. All right, record the initial volume. So I record my volume right now. It's at zero mils. The very top of the barrette is, reads zero. Okay, then I usually pipe at 10 mils. It doesn't have to be 10, but uh, usually when we do these labs, we use 10. 10 mils of the sample solution, which in this case is our iron solution, into the flask. So you get your pipette, you dip it in there, and we pull it out, we squirt it in, we get 10 mils. That might be, I think our mils, or our pipettes are five mils, so you have to do that twice to get 10. Okay, and then if this is an acid base lab, we would drop two to three drops of indicator into the flask, into the sample. For this lab and for most redox ones, we have, we have our own color change um, just from the color of the ions that we're already using, so we don't have an indicator. Okay, and then we slowly add the titrant to the sample until one drop causes a permanent color change. When the color lingers, then proceed drop by drop until one drop causes the permanent color change. After each addition, gently swirl the flask. All right, my little animation skills are not that good, but here's a little drop. Okay, so there's a drop. Now that drop would splash in and purple would appear in the flask for a second you would swish it and the purple would disappear because the iron two ions are gobbling up the purple permanganate ion. But for a second, it's there before it reacts. Anyway, we keep this process going until we finally get a color change and it should turn light pink if we've done it right. If it turns dark pink or purple, we've, we've overshot the end point. We've gone too far. Okay, a permanent color change. All right, and then, we, then we record the final volume of the titrant. So um, we started at zero and it went down, the little picture shows like two, but realistically um, it's like 11 mils, okay? So 11.5 mils we're gonna pretend is what the reading was. And then we rinse the flask with distilled water. So we take that flask, rinse it out, and then we repeat. Okay, so when we repeat on trial two, what's my new volume, my volume initial? I don't have to fill the barrette back up to zero again. I can just use the, um, use the final volume of my first trial. So I'll just start at 11.5, and let's say I ended the next trial down somewhere at 21.6, and then I did that again, and then one more time. Okay, so there's my, there's my, um, data table for each trial. All right, uh, clean up the lab. And now we do some chemistry. So there's all of the entities that were in the flask. 
I had my iron in the flask. I was dropping in permanganate ions. It was acidic. Of course, there's water in there. And I go to my chart, and I find that the SOA is permanganate, and the SRA is iron 2. So the strongest oxidizing agent is reduced. Strongest reducing agent is oxidized. So now I'll write my reduction half reaction, which is permanganate in the book. Looks like that. I just copy it right out of the book because it's a reduction equation. My oxidation equation I have to flip and then I start, I balance my electrons so I needed five and then I add it all together so there's my reaction. Okay. Now we haven't even done stoic yet, now I gotta do stoic. So there's my reaction. The question is asking us what is the concentration of 10 mils of acidic iron 2 solution? So iron 2 is required. And what do they require? They want to know the concentration. They've given us the volume of 10 mils. The other substance, permanganate, was, quote, given to us. Like they gave us the concentration, which is 0 0.00800 mils per liter. And we know the volume. The volume is in our data table. So I look at my data table. Trial 1 was 11.5 mils. Trials 2, 3, and 4 were roughly 10 mils. 10, 1, 10, 3, 10, 0. So 11, 5 is out because it's, it's an outlier. It looks like we overshot the endpoint there. So I'm going to toss that one. Average these together, 10.13. And I'm going to throw that up there. Don't, don't round that now. Leave a big long number there so that we get our correct significant digits and our correct rounding. Okay. Now I do stoic. I have a little road map. I start with the volume of given, convert it to moles, convert it to moles of required, and then find concentration. So the key to a road map is knowing what you want to end up with. I want to end up knowing moles per liter of iron 2. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to start with volume of given, 10.13 mils of permanganate. Okay. I'm going to now convert that to moles. So I'm going to go 0 0.00800 moles over a liter. There, I've just used all my given numbers. Um, I'm not going to cancel mils and liters yet because I've done enough of these that I know I can cancel it at the end and it'll all work. Times by required over given. So I got five irons for every one permanganate. And then my final volume, I need liters on the bottom, so I want to cancel mils. And so I've got 1 over 10. Now I'm hoping this shows cancellation, um, but I'm not sure if it's going to. And my final answer is 0 0.0405 moles per liter of iron 2. Permanganate cancelled out, and that's where that and that left me with my iron 2. And my milliliters cancelled out right there. I, would, I actually should have shown those cancelling as I went. That's what I usually do when I'm writing this on the board, but I forgot how the timing on this worked. So, anyway, that is how you do that. Okay? All right. Um, there's a whole bunch of questions to do. Good luck.